Dana, listen, every time we have somebody that ends up sideways with the UFC, they have two things in common. First off, they've always been released. And second off, they end up sideways with whatever other organization they go to. Most recently is a young man who was given a huge opportunity, put on the Ultimate Fighter, put in the UFC time and time again. His name is Matt Riddle. What are your thoughts on this gentleman? Yeah, that's, that's a, you know, the story that was written that he, he uh, made all these allegations about mixed martial arts uh, businesses are run by these, these, these bad guys, these scumbags and this and that. Uh, he basically said, I, you know, I, I want to get back out in the real world now and start working. I want to get a job where I know I'm going to get a paycheck. I'm not going to get punched in the face and get brain damage. And, and, and uh, I know I'm going to be treated fairly. And, and uh, you know, he said that we treated him unfairly and our competitor treated him unfairly. Now I don't want to sound like I'm going whatever. Well, those guys signed him and now they won't give him a fight until January. If you sign a if you sign a contract with the UFC, I owe you three fights in a year. If you don't fight those three fights in a year because of me, I still have to pay you your money, right? So he said that since 2000, from 2011 to 2013, that guy was making $162,000 a year. Wow. Now understand this: the guy fights on prelims. You know, does, 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 he, does Matt Riddle sell any more tickets? Does he sell any more pay-per-views? The guy's fighting on the prelims, okay? He's fighting his way up to get the opportunity to possibly someday become a big star in the sport. Um, then he comes out and says, all the, like, we treated him horrible. He's treated so horrible here. You were making $162,000 a year. He's making something like fifty-two dollars or $54,000 a fight, and you fight three times a year unless you get injured or something like that happens. We have health insurance here, which has never been done in the history of the world with fight promoters, okay? Now, the reason he's not in the UFC anymore is because he could not pass a drug test. <laughs> the guy couldn't pass a drug test, okay? So he, he couldn't, and think about this. You have to go to work three times a year and you couldn't pass a drug test? You're so weak-minded and so addicted to marijuana that you couldn't stay off it enough to pass a drug test three times a year. Well, guess what, dummy? They drug test in the real world, too. You think you're <laughs> gonna go to work 325 days a year and not get drug tested? Right? He yeah, couldn't pass a drug test three times a year, but he's gonna pass it in the real world, right? And I wanna know where this rocket scientist is gonna go and make a hundred something thousand dollars a year, right? And also, this is the guy, Matt Riddle, who did an interview and said, I smoke marijuana so I don't beat my wife and children. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, and I want to point out, MMA Junkie, the, 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 the people that did this story took one side of the story, and they're writing this big story about a guy who, who said, I smoke marijuana so I don't beat my wife and kids, and only got his side of the story. Real journalism. Real journalism. Yeah, not surprised by that. That's one thing that we don't see down here at FS1 and UFC Tonight. You always get both sides. Dana, thank you for being candid, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Jill.